So as the wheat recovery continues, we're constantly reminded of the importance of entrepreneurs to fuel growth. But how hard is it to start a business in a slump and end up counting the likes of Citigroup, Glencore and Barcap among your clients? Well, here's a company which has done just that. Founded in the UK in 2001, Thunderhead offers a single software program which allows companies to send personalized messages to customers by mail, email and text message. It now boasts global clients across the investment banking, insurance, healthcare and energy industries. Now, the company generated revenues of $40 million in 2010, 40, that's 40% higher than the previous year. Thunderhead's growth has earned it a host of accolades. It topped Deloitte's ranking as the fastest growing tech company in Europe, Middle East and Africa. The brains behind it all, Glenn Manchester was named UK Entrepreneur of the Year in 2009. I'm pleased to say that the founder and CEO of Thunderhead joins me live now from the, uh, the Follow the Entrepreneur Conference in Hampshire, Southern England. Great to see you, Glenn. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, so I want to start no, by asking you. Great to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. So I want to start by asking you about the single biggest challenge, the single biggest obstacle facing entrepreneurs, facing people that just want to start a business in Europe. In Europe, it's it, yeah, it's it's probably scale. It's getting the right proposition right, but then it's how you scale. Um, you're dealing in a global market, and it's how you can create something that you can you can propagate not just locally but internationally because no doubt you're facing uh, strong North American competition so you've got to get your proposition right and design a strategy that enables you to to go transatlantic as quickly as you can. You speak about uh, transatlantic competition there would you describe Europe as being a fertile place for tech companies especially when you look at Silicon Valley and the big names Microsoft, Apple, Google, these companies? Yeah, it's all changing. I mean, with enterprise technology, you know, traditional sort of large software programs, um, that market was always going to be dominated by the U.S. because U.S. firms can grow so quickly because it's a big common market, as you know. Uh, but now with mobile, uh, mobile internet, um, cloud-based activity, um, European companies have the same opportunity to scale quickly because they, they have kind of the same channel to market because it's so flexible. So I've seen a lot more activity in Europe around the venture capital community uh, who are just as eager as their North American counterparts. So is it getting easier or more difficult to get funding if you're a startup? I think if you've got the right proposition, I think there's a lot more flexibility in the market now. I think there's an appetite among the VCs uh, who are pretty shrewd in terms of what they're looking for uh, to take new propositions to market. So I think Europe is actually a good venture uh, platform for new startups. Uh, and I guess one of the differences, I'm, I'm curious, because you're obviously pushing very aggressively uh, into North America now, and I'm just wondering, you know, some of the cultural differences between Europe and the U.S., and I've been speaking to a couple of guys um, who started their own business, and they were saying that, you know, you've got this attitude in the U.S. That, that failure is, well, not necessarily a good thing, but it's a stepping stone to something better, whereas here in Europe it's seen as just that, failure. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to. I, I'm, I'm more on the idea of not liking to fail. Um, when you got your venture, and in my case, I privately funded it. We just couldn't consider or contemplate the option of failing. Um, but from a from a go-to-market point of view, North America is definitely where it's at. You know, Europe's much more complicated. Uh, when you're marketing a product, that you physically have to install on on a customer's premise. Uh, North America is much more um, uh, generic in terms of a channel. Um, and it's much easier to scale your business. So in the context of supplying a product and, and distributing it across Europe, it's much more challenging, as you can imagine. Um, new technology pathways with mobile computing and the cloud you know, yeah. transform that landscape. But historically, I mean, it's fair to say North American businesses are much more aggressive. There's a much more can-do attitude. But I see that the tides are starting to change. And I don't say it's a level playing field, but uh, there's much more more confident um, uh, you know, entrepreneur activity now in Europe um, in, in a similar spirit to the North American counterparts. So I'm just curious then what needs to happen to make it less challenging and less difficult for companies here in Europe so that they sort of continue to grow in Europe rather than expanding into North America as you're doing? 
Yeah, I, I think that will happen now. I think um, because of the shift to the cloud in terms of channeling technology to customers, I think that's probably the big shift. I mean, you've got consumer behavior has changed as well. Clearly, everybody's um, uh, become um, comfortable using the mobile internet. And that means the customers themselves, the consumers of content, are you know dramatically different to the customers that uh, organizations were designing yeah. technologies for you know even five ten years ago